Fellow Coasters, Mr. Chair, and most welcome guests. This is a slightly long project. It's going to take about 10 to 40 minutes. I'll break it down for you. I'm going to give you a four to five minute introduction on the process of coaching and how it's meant to be done. After we're done with that, I'll give you a one minute intro to a role play that, I, that Craig and I are going to do together. That role play session is going to last anywhere between three to five minutes. After that's done, we will have a roundtable discussion for two to three minutes where we will be seeking your feedback on the session. So that's pretty much the, the present, presentation today in a nutshell. I will start off by, have you turned the timer? Yeah, just okay, there. thank you. So I will start off by talking about the process of coaching. It's something that we do so that we can help people learn what is expected of them. It could be a job situation, and that's mostly where I'll be focusing today. What is their current performance level? How do they need to improve if their current performance level doesn't match up to where it's supposed to be, what is expected of them? And in the process, we can figure out their strengths and weaknesses and where they need to improve. So as a part of the whole coaching process, you can then come up with solutions and figure out what this person needs to improve, how they need to improve it, and come up with strategies and discuss that. Some of the reasons why people would need a coaching session are as follows. They can have poor training. You can put them in a situation where they basically have no training. So, for example, in my field, I'm an engineer. If somebody's only done, say, gravity design and they don't know anything about earthquakes, if you throw them up into a project where they're actually supposed to to look, at, look into earthquake loading and how structures behave under seismic loading, they probably won't know, so they'll need training for it. They can have inadequate equipment. Again, just giving you an example, if you're going to need a certain type of software to do a certain type of analysis, and you give them that's not state of the art and cannot handle what, needs, what they need to have, then they're not going to be able to do their job. They can be overwhelmed. So you give them too many tasks and they basically just do not have the time to do what is required of them. That can be one of the, one of the reasons. And they can just purely lack motivation. That's another thing that people can sometimes be faced with, that they're just not motivated to do what they're supposed to do. So when you start the process, you need to get clear on the person and yourself, you need to be clear on what it is that's supposed to be done, what it is that they're required to produce for you. What is the difference between their present level of skills and performance versus where they need to be to perform what it is that's required of them? Do they have the essential skills, as I mentioned, for example, they have done one type of analysis, they've just never done something else. In that case, you need to get them trained, you need to send them to workshop, you need to send them somewhere to get them properly trained so that they can bring up their performance level and start to produce what it is that you require of them. One thing though is if the person cannot do the job no matter what, if they just completely lack motivation or if they're in the wrong field, then coaching may not help. And there that you might need to coach them to sort of find what it is that they would fit in better with. So there are nine steps to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the process, and I'll just take you through them one by one. When you sit down, and you'll see when we do this role play, that I will try my best to, to incorporate these steps and see, you'll, you'll tell me afterwards how it goes. But basically you have to specifically describe the reason why the coaching session is happening. You need to make it clear to the person why you're having this conversation. You need to express your concern, the specific concern about their performance, the specific area that needs their attention. With that, you need to describe the sort of impact it has. The performance certainly is having some impact, and it's, that needs to be addressed. That needs to be spelled out clearly to the person. How it is affecting you, how it is affecting the rest of the team, how it is affecting the organization if that is the case. Once you've done this, you need to acknowledge and listen to the other person because they will provide you feedback. 
you'll figure out at that point if it is a lack of training or lack of equipment or they're just not motivated or don't have the time. So at that point, get into that active listening mode and get the feedback from them. So acknowledge them and get the feedback. You then have to hash out, the two of you together, will try and figure out what is the solutions that you can basically incorporate to bring their performance level up. So you need to discuss the solutions. After you've done that, you need to pick one, and that should be consensual. The person should be willing to invest their time and energy into that solution. Because if it's just coming from you and you're thirsting this, thrusting this upon them, it will not have the desired impact. <clears throat> Once you've agreed on the solution, then you need to chart out a course of action. So you'll, you'll figure out which ones, what steps you're going to specifically take to tackle the, uh, the issue. After that, you need to follow up. So if you've sent them to a workshop, follow up. How did it go? And then their performance will show. Once they've improved their performance, provide them with positive feedback. And if they haven't, then you need to sit down again and get, go through the process to figure out what's happening. Okay, so that's pretty much the process in a nutshell. The role play is going to, I'll describe it as, as this. Craig is an engineer in training. He's fresh out of school. He's probably had one year of experience. I'm higher up in the hierarchy in, in, a, in an engineering organization. So I'm in this, at the senior level, he's at the junior level, and there is an intermediate level. And what is going on is, and you'll figure this out as we go, but basically information is not being fed through, through the chain. So the design process is halting, and we need to figure out why that is going on. So we'll just um, get together and do a bit of role play for you. <clears throat> We should sit across the table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to uh, talk to me about something? Yeah, we'll start and just so let's sit down. And then um, let us know when you start the time. Yeah, stop Okay. Hi, Craig. Yeah. How's it going? How bad? How are you? I'm good. So I basically wanted to talk to you about the projects that are going on at this point and some of the deadlines that we have coming up in the next month or so. And what the concern is, and it's been, we've, we've been talking about this, is some of the information, the analysis that you're doing, we're not getting the information being fed to the intermediate engineers to actually do the design. And what I wanted to do was sit down with you today and have a bit of a chat to see where, well, first of all, why it's taking a bit longer than what we thought it would, and what we can do to remedy the situation to sort of help you out. So I understand that the analysis is, is quite tough, and it's, are you having issues with the software? Are you having issues with the whole organizational setup? What do you think is... Well, to be honest, it's difficult to get anything done with the constant interruptions. Mm -hmm. Like, even today, I'm in the middle of doing my job, and now you want to sit down and talk. Most likely, <laughs> it'll push me into overtime, and I'll have to stay on my own time. We right. both know that I'm not paid for that. Right. So, if I had uh, uninterrupted time with my own office to work in, mm -hmm. I could probably get my job done. Okay, are you getting the feedback from the intermediate engineers with the things that you need to do? Are they, are they closing the loop with you? I know that this is taking a bit of time away, but I think this is time well spent today so that if we figure out where exactly the shoe pinch is, that it will help you produce more, more efficiently, more effectively. Well, yeah, I'm glad we're having this talk then because, yeah. you know, you, I hear from the one person I need to work on this today, mm -hmm. and then I start working on it, and then someone else comes along and takes it away from me. And then someone says, Saqib wants this by noon, and then someone else says it's by three, but we need this first. So I think there's a bit of a gap in the communication. Okay. So maybe. If, if so I'm we need to streamline the process for you because it seems like you're being distracted by too many things going on at the same time. That's right. Okay, so I will, I will get on to that, and what we'll make sure is we provide you with concrete task lists 
and yeah. I will try and do my best to sort of keep the other people out of the whole mix so that they're not coming to you every two hours and one is pushing you in this direction, the other one is pulling you in the, in the other direction. Apart from that, as far as the software knowledge goes, you're sort of developing that at this point. Are you being given any senior oversight on that? Do you need more help, say, from an intermediate level engineer to sit down with you for a few hours here and there to help you bring you up to speed? I don't think so. It's pretty easy. I've okay. figured out my own way to do most of it, and uh, right. if you, uh, you know, I can do it quicker than most other people. Uh, okay. So the software issue is not thought not that critical. No, I just pretty much do it my own way. Okay. I what I was also thinking was because you're new and we're throwing you into all this 3D analysis that the the Structural Engineers Association is coming up with a couple of analysis courses. Would you be interested in attending one or two of those? Because that will fast track your learning curve. So you're learning on, on the job, but if you do that and will pay for it, that it will actually make you a better engineer and a bit faster. And we will all gain from that. I would love to take the courses, but last time I went on a course, you guys paid for the course, but you didn't pay me for my time. So okay. if I'm taken away from work, then I lose a day's pay mm -hmm. and I get a free course. But who does it benefit? So this one, let's let's do it this way. This one is being offered on Saturdays. If you can commit to half of your time, and then we can cover the other half. We can pay for the course. We can pay you half of the time that you're there. The benefit that you get is is okay. that's very fast. You're learning. Yeah, that's very fast. Okay. So let's do that, and then we'll I'll make sure that you have less distractions, and not everybody's throwing you in, into this this horrendous mix. And let's get you onto this training track, and, and we'll just, I think things will improve. Thanks, I appreciate that. Okay, so we'll have another chat after. Okay. okay. Good luck. Okay, thank you. So.